Hi, well, as you can see, we've got the game Ships by Martin Wallace, and here's Gary. Hi. Um, well, Martin's a well-known designer, and we've known him for a lot of years, so we, we do like his games. And this one uh, is a follow-on from um, uh, Automobiles, and was superseded after that by Airplanes. But tonight it's Ships. Uh, we've had a two-player game. Um, as you can see from the board, um, there are two areas of, of play. The outer edge, which is where you progress in terms of the shipping ability, through galleys to um, uh, better types of ships, all the way down into the sort of steam uh, uh, era. Uh, but at the same time, as you're progressing around here, scoring points as you go, and losing points, as we'll talk about later, uh, you've also got to have map play. So by progressing, by placing ships, you're allowed to then place some influence on the map. So it might be a city, influence in a city, or uh, placing a merchant on. Um, all this will score you points, gain you resources, gain you extra merchants perhaps, uh, which are then represented on the uh, array. So we've got um, our merchant stock, um, we've got the different actions. Now, one of the key features of the game is you can only have uh, two actions usually. Sometimes you can get a third if you've got um, uh, an extra advanced um, merchant, mercenary type place. Um, but your, your choices are limited. So one of the key things about the game is, is making the right decisions. You've not only got placing ships and then placing stuff on the map, but you've got the cards as well, which add another dimension, because uh, these will give you benefits uh, in both um, map play uh, and in moving ships, because uh, you can upgrade ships, and there are advantages. So you, you can't ignore uh, any element of the game. Let me hand you over now to Steve, and he'll give you a, a more of a, an overview. Yeah, well, Gary's mentioned these two areas, and in terms of design, I think that's one of the kind of um, hallmarks of the game, is that Martin's tied the two areas, the, the development of ships and the development of, of the position on the map. He's used similar systems in those uh, two areas, so that um, you're putting things on the board, the ships drive what goes on the board, but what, what is a key moment of the game is when you go through uh, and here the navigation area, just see that for number five, you have to have a number of ships behind it and then you can spend some navigation counters, this one here, to get yourself through into the next uh, batch of the game. When you do that you get a bonus and ships behind lose your points. So that kind of jumping forward mechanism in the game is, is a critical part of the game and you've got to be looking for that the whole time. At the same time, this is where Martin's, you know, the experience of designing is, there's a lot of rules and he talks about the rules being a bit opaque and tricky, but actually that area is, is, is countered well by having the same system here. So if you come out of area two, the beginning one, you, you go to, from two to three, you'll see again that same navigation system. To get out of that area, you've got to have the number of cities in the background, then add the uh, navigation points again. You can then start working into area three and then on to four, five, six. But that is a sort of design feature which experienced designer like Martin knows he's got to put in because if he puts in a very different system, people are going to struggle with it quite a lot. So well done on that, on that, thing, on that count, for pulling the game together as a coherent whole. I think what he's also done is that um, he's got variety in the game, as Gary mentioned, from these cards. But quite cleverly, actually the cards from era to era, and there are three eras through the game, I won't go into explaining that, but it's to do with the progression of the ships. Um, Actually, the, the cards are not radically different from era to era. So some people say, oh, well, why didn't you do that? Well, because if you're doing a, a two hour game and you want people to engage with it and get into it at a sort of fairly, a fairly tricky level, a fairly, you know, he said, talks about a brain burning, burning game. You can't then impose upon people a huge raft of, of different cards here. You'll just spend the whole game reading these cards and strategizing around the cards. So the strategy around the cards tends to be similar through the game. I think, so, I think that's the strength of the game. Some people might say it's a, you know, something that's not such a strength. They'd like to see a lot more variety, but I can see why he's done that. I think it works well. So we're now going to talk about playing and winning, uh, and Gary's going to just kick off a bit about that. He take over. Right, back to Gary. Right, uh, the crucial uh, sort of thing to remember is it's timing. You've got to, there's no sort of 
easy way to score big points right at the beginning. You've got to build up, there's sort of momentum in the game. Uh, and timing is everything. Timing when you go through, do you want to be the first through and try to punish people behind you? Because you get a bonus for going through first as well. Uh, do you want to then set yourself up on the map? So if you get some heavy placement on the map, move through on the map quicker. You score more uh, for the cities in that area than and the merchants in that area than other people do. I, in the game we played, I made a very big killing here in e Epoch uh, 4, uh, which took me into the lead and I was able to keep that going. Whereas when we played with Gareth, uh, he made sure he was going through virtually first every time. Poor old Steve was right at the back for most of that time, probably lost 15, 16 points through that, which doesn't sound a lot over the course of a game when you might end up with 100 and odd points, but it's a significant thing because you're always playing catch up. And so timing when you go through the uh, shipping areas and when you go through the map areas is, is, is crucial. Yeah, and just to follow on from that, um, timing and efficiency at the end of the game is also uh, a critical thing. One thing I did wrong when we played this game was I ended up having six merchants that were unused at the end of the game. Now these merchant cubes, they don't score anything for having them on your board at the end of the game. They're either on the map or they're, you know, they're being used down here in ones and twos. So you've really got to get them active through the game. Uh, similarly, these black cubes here, which are the you know, sort of super merchants or whatever they are, you need to get those involved in the game because that's the only way you're going to um, increase your capacity and your, your ability at the end of the game is to put those into the game. Earlier on, you can use them. Uh, no, you can't use them. You can only use them in the second and the third year, actually, mm. uh, with the boat. So you've got to get them into play, and they're extremely useful. And it's the only way you can crank up your play. But again, there's no point having those on your board at the end of the game. That's totally useless. So you've got to be efficient in what you do through the game, as well as time it. Make sure that everything you've been doing is leading up to a good position at the end of the game, because uh, it can end up winding down quite quickly. It ends when the, a certain number of ships end up in these last two boxes here. I think it's just five ships. That's the last round. So very quickly the game um, can, can spin out of your control. That's certainly what happened to me. I, I was looking good for another five, six turns, but uh, they just weren't going to happen. Uh, anyway, we've enjoyed the game. We've played it three, four times now. Um, I think we will play it again. Uh, I'm not sure when it's going to come out. There are so many great games out there. But I think we've really got our heads rounded at last. It has taken a while to fully understand what Martin's trying to do. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think I think there's a lot of joy to be had there for a lot of people. And very lovely artwork from Peter Dennis. Yeah, indeed.